A significant element of the rationalization behind the issuance of the executive order was the inability of the Rhode Island General Assembly to convene, given what appeared to be significant public health issues of meeting a person. Currently, the Assembly is in full session. They are actively engaged in a full range of legislative activities, including consideration of gun control, climate can change, and the need for doulas and birth coaches. As the executive order clearly usurps representative government, why is the executive order still in place? Because we're still a challenge with a virus that we need to get on top of, so let's get everybody vaccinated. The more people get vaccinated, the more possibilities we are to have loosen up not only the businesses, but also on the uh, executive order, and we're still only, we're not even halfway there yet. Not a monarchy per se. I'm not accusing you of that. A lot of this is based on your predecessor, but ultimately, doesn't the General Assembly have a critical role in determining the actions in response to this now that they are in fact meeting? Yeah, and I'm meeting with them, uh, with the Speaker, the Senate President, and other leadership, not only on the budget, but other related areas. So that process is continuing, as, uh, and the people are being well represented. There's no formal review process per se if, in fact, an executive order eliminates the need for legislative approval. And this is going to be critical, for example, when you've got the presence of possibly a billion dollars, two billion dollars, ten billion dollars, whatever, from President Biden's uh, relief program. I've answered that as well. We'll be working with the General Assembly on all those issues. Uh, doctor, um, we talk about micromanaging. And this is a lot of folks have evidence, a lot of frustration of this. For example, the change from eight people to 10 people at a table. Now, in a state where, for example, we don't seem to have an agreed upon CTR cycle time threshold value in, in terms of arranging or arriving at our 2% infection rate, at a time when every established clinical trial has denied and disproven the efficacy of using masks, I think there's, what, a dozen trials been out there, randomized trials, thousands of people involved. How do we arrive at these Seemingly, how many angels on the needle of a pin measurements do we get going from 8 to 10 specifically? That has significant impact going forward on business. We understand the science behind the virus and how the virus spreads. When you have larger groups of people together in close quarters, unmasked, engaging closely, perhaps in less well-ventilated areas, and with a variant that is continuing to spread, the risk for transmission is higher. Every step we can take to mitigate against that, to minimize the risk of that type of invisible or otherwise spread is valuable to do. And the incremental steps that we have been taking to help release that are to make sure that we do it carefully. As I've shared, we are in a plateau. We are not still continuing to decline. That means the variant is still present, it is spreading, and we need to continue to be cautious in how we're proceeding. Respectfully, at a point in time when Rhode Islanders were surveyed and there was an acknowledged near 96% use of masks, and I'm just using this as one example, I don't want to assess over masks per se, um, we had one of our biggest spikes. Despite continuing restrictions, we seem to have the worst of all worlds here. Masks are effective. We can go to the next question, Brian. Uh, Governor McKee, last week you committed to a 70% vaccination rate as a benchmark, if you will, to completely reopen the economy. Uh, two questions. Number one, how close are we to that? And number two, what are you measuring 70% of? Well, I didn't say completely, but the 70% uh, the were, as the, Dr. Alexander Scott and others have reported, we're over 300,000 3, first shots, uh, and uh, we're looking at moving up to about the 620,000, 650,000 mark uh, by, I think, sometime between, on um, first shot, sometime between mid-May and the end of May. So when we, when we get to that level, we'll see where we are on all the other factors, but that's a key point for me on that issue. And I, I do want to just say, follow up on the, on the press conference that was at the um, State House today. I did meet with both Jim Vincent and uh, Pastor Jenkins on the issues, and uh, there is an issue there, and wherever there's an issue we need to really address, if, uh, for instance, the black community is at three percent of the uh, of the shots, and they're at eight percent of the pop, uh, you know, the um, eight percent of the population, uh, we got to we got to ratchet that up. I think everybody in the, would understand that. So, uh, just as an example, if we did three hundred thousand shots, and they are eight percent of the population, that population should we should be closer to twenty four thousand shots with them, right? Uh, being fair across the board. Uh, if we're at 10,000 shots, we've got some makeup to do. So that's the idea to kind of put it into a math formula and make that happen.